one of the reasons to learn about the black presence in the Bible is to give black people a divinely oriented sense of pride and to inform white people about how blacks have contributed to God's kingdom program in history. Let me read from my book, One That's Embraced, on influential blacks in the Bible. The sons of Ham. Noah's son Ham had four sons, Cush, Mizraim, Put, and Canaan. Cush was the progenitor of the Ethiopian people. This is validated by the fact the names Cush and Ethiopia are used interchangeably in scripture. Genesis 2, 13, 10, verse 6. Mizraim was the progenitor of the Egyptian people, who are understood in scripture to have been a Hamitic people and thus African. Psalm 78, 51. Psalm 103, 23, and verses 26 and 27. Also Psalm 106, verses 21 and 22. Put with the progenitor of Libya, and Canaan was the progenitor of the Canaanites, one of the most problematic foes of God's chosen people, the Israelites. Nimrod. Of particular importance is the powerful Old Testament figure Nimrod, the descendant of Cush who ruled in the land of Shinar, Genesis 10, 8 to 10 and 11, verse 2. Nimrod eventually became the father of two of the greatest empires in the Bible and in world history, Assyria and Babylonia. He was the first great leader of a world civilization, Genesis 10, 11 to 12. He led all the people on earth and served as earth's protector. Nimrod's presence and accomplishments confirmed the unique and early leadership role black people played in world history. The tribe of Ephraim. Hermetic people were crucial to the program of God throughout Old Testament biblical history. Joseph's wife, an Egyptian woman, Genesis 41, verse 45 and verses 50 to 52, was the mother of Manasseh and Ephraim who later became leaders of Jewish tribes. In fact, the tribe of Ephraim produced one of the greatest leaders Israel ever had, Moses' successor, Joshua, Numbers 13.8 and 1 Chronicles 7.22-27. This Jewish-African link is very strong in Scripture. The prophet Amos said, Are you not as the sons of Ethiopia to me, O sons of Israel, declares the Lord? Amos 9, 7, Caleb. Caleb was the son of Jephni, the Canaanite. The Canaanites were a part of the Canaanite tribes, Genesis 15, 19, and descendants of Ham. Caleb also came from the tribe of Judah, Joshua 14, verse 6 and 14. Judah, the progenitor of the tribe, fathered twin sons by Tamar, a Hamitic woman, Genesis 38. Caleb joined with Joshua as one of the two spies who went to explore Canaan and brought back a positive report to enter the land and take possession of it as God had declared, Numbers 13 to 14. Jethro. Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, from whom Moses received the greatest single piece of advice regarding national leadership, ministry organization, political strategy, and personal planning, Exodus 18, 13 to 27, that was ever recorded was a Kenite, Judges 1, 16, part of the Canaanite tribes, Genesis 15, 19, who descended from Ham. At that time, the Kenites had settled in the land of Midian. Another interesting observation regarding Jethro is that he is identified as the priest of Midian, Exodus 3, 1. Since he was a priest, yet he was not a Levite, and the Aaronic priesthood had not yet been established, the question is, what kind of priesthood could this have been? The only other priesthood within the framework of Scripture to which Jethro could have belonged was the priesthood of Melchizedek, Genesis 14, 18. This is significant because Christ was a priest after the order of Melchizedek, Hebrews 7, 17. This means that the priest Jethro, 
who was of African descent may have been indicative of pre-Aaronic priesthood, such as that of Melchizedek, which foreshadowed the priestly role of both Christ and the church. This then is another basis for recognizing the strategic role Africans played in the biblical saga that continues today, because all Christians are related to Jethro and his priesthood as part of the royal priesthood. David. King David is known not only as a man after God's own heart, 1 Samuel 13, 14, but as one of the greatest kings in Israel's history. David's great-grandmother was a Canaanite, Rahab, who is also listed in the Hall of Faith, Hebrews eleven thirty one. 31. David's grandmother was Ruth, a Moabite, from a people who were Canaanites as well. David, one of the heroes of the faith, hailed from mixed Jewish and Hamitic ancestry and stands as a leader of whom blacks can be proud to call their own. Solomon. Solomon was David's son with Bathsheba, a Hamitic woman. Bathsheba literally means the daughter of Sheba. The table of nations identifies Sheba in the line of Ham, making Sheba a descendant of an African nation. Genesis 10, 7. The Song of Solomon describes Solomon's features as tanned and handsome, better than 10,000 others. His head is pure as gold, and he has wavy raven hair. Song of Solomon, chapter 5, verses 10 to 11. Solomon was not only the wisest man to rule a nation, but he also brought about the greatest extension of Israel's reach as a kingdom. 1 Kings 3, 3 to 14. Solomon's great-great-grandmother, great-grandmother, and mother gave him roots within the black race and placed him as an example of black achievement. Zephaniah. Underscoring the fact that black people are an integral part of God's revelatory process in both the proclamation and recording of divine revelation is the prophet Zephaniah. The Old Testament states that Zephaniah was of Hamitic origin. He was from the lineage of Cush, Zephaniah 1.1, and he prophesied God's judgment on Judah and her enemies for their rebellion against God and their gross idolatry. Yet, he proclaimed the grace of God would save a remnant and restore blessing to the people. People of African descent can take pride in God's prophet Zephaniah, one of the biblical authors, as their forefather. Blacks in the lineage of Christ. Deserving of our greatest attention is the lineage of Christ, who is the heart and soul of the Christian faith. Over and over again, the prophets prophesied that Messiah would come from the seed of David. As we've already seen, the Davidic line finds a number of black people within it. Of the five women mentioned in Matthew's genealogy, Matthew 1, 1 to 16, four are of Hamitic descent, Tamar, Rahab, Bathsheba, and Ruth. The point here is not that Jesus was black. To assert such as some black theologians and religious leaders do is to fall into the exclusionist perspective of many whites who would make Jesus an Anglo-European, blue-eyed blonde, who had very little relevance to people of color. It would also fail to respect the distinct heritage of Christ. Rather, Jesus was Matizo, a person of mixed ancestry. It blesses me to know that Jesus had black in his blood because that destroys any perception of black inferiority once and for all. In Christ, we find perfect man and sinless savior. This knowledge frees blacks from an inferiority complex, and at the same time it frees whites from a superiority myth. In Christ, we all have our heritage. Black people, as all other people, can find a place of historical, cultural, and racial identity in him. As savior of all mankind, he can relate to all people in every situation. In him, any person from any background can find comfort, understanding, direction, and affinity as long as he is revealed as the Son of God, a designation that transcends every culture. Black people, as all other people, can find a place of historical, cultural, and racial identity in him. 
the savior of all mankind. He can relate to all people in every situation. In him, any person from any background can find comfort, understanding, direction, and affinity as long as he is revered as the son of God, a designation that transcends every culture and race and one to which all nations of people must pay homage. Even when we leave the pages of the New Testament era, we run into African people of faith who had a profound influence upon the expansion of Christianity. I hope this excites you about learning more about your biblical history if you are of black or African descent. But I also hope it inspires whites to a broader view and appreciation of all that has been contributed by black people in the glory of God, the writing of scripture, and the person of our savior. You can find more in our book, Oneness Embraced. Mm -hmm.